Wayne Carini is a famous American car restoration specialist and a TV star. He's most well known for his work as a host of Chasing Classic Cars, a documentary TV series with a focus on finding the rarest old timers and returning them to their old glory. Wayne is also the owner of a very impressive classic car collection, a part of which we had a glimpse of in a YouTube video he did with Dennis Collins. Born in Portland, Connecticut in 1951, Wayne was no stranger to car repair from his early days, as his father, Bob, owned a car collision repair and auto restoration shop in nearby Glastonbury. Young Wayne wasn't so excited about helping his father in the beginning. After all, he was just a boy longing to play with his peers. However, one special event changed his feelings about cars forever. During a family vacation in 1960, Wayne's dad took him for a ride in the newest Rosé Chiaro Ferrari model. This experience left a huge mark on Wayne, who instinctively learned to appreciate the beauty and power of state-of-the-art cars, particularly Ferraris. In the following years, he spent more time with Bob in his garage, and the two frequented local car shows. During his teenage years, Wayne started making plans to pursue a college degree in architecture. His plans were quickly shut down by his father, who made him an offer he couldn't refuse. Half of the family business. He took this opportunity more than seriously and became an expert in the field. Together with his father, Wayne worked on numerous classic cars, including Packards, Duesenbergs, and Lincolns. His talent later earned him the role of Grand Marshal at the Klingberg Vintage Motor Car Festival in New Britain, Connecticut. Wayne made his TV debut in 2008 as the host of Chasing Classic Cars. The show is still going strongly, entering its 17th season, which attests to its quality. Carini's talent and dedication are obvious to anyone who has watched the show, and has led to finding some of the rarest vehicles in the US. A major selling point of the show is its premise, in which the host travels around the US, visiting some of the most obscure places in hopes of finding unique vehicles. Wayne found a Pierce Arrow hiding in a garage that had been closed for over 50 years at that point. While Carini is primarily tasked with hunting rare cars, he has a team of people helping him repair them at home. The brain behind the operation was the car repair specialist and Wayne's childhood friend, Roger Barr. He has since left the show for medical reasons after suffering a leg injury in the workshop. Due to its popularity, Chasing Classic Cars has had a number of celebrity appearances over the years, including big names from Jay Leno to Tim Allen and Chase Briscoe. Wayne Carini himself has made guest appearances in several other automotive TV shows, including Auction Kings and Overhaulin. He also starred in the TV special The Art of the Automobile in 2015 and in the documentary Driving Amelia in 2020. While Wayne has auctioned off most of his finds from chasing classic cars, others he has kept for his personal collection, which today includes more than 25 vehicles from different decades. Let's take a look at some of his most impressive finds displayed in his garage. I almost never see these on the streets. I know. It's, it's really unbelievable to think that it's such a beautiful unbelievable car. car, you know, with that side exhaust coming out in front, that's, that's so cool. By the age of 16, Wayne had become enamored with automobiles and had already envisioned a dream car for himself, a 1954 Hudson Italia. This extraordinary vehicle, designed by the legendary Frank Spring, has some of the best specifications of its times. The car featured a lightweight but powerful engine and was one of the first models on the market to have a built-in radio and air conditioning, which we now consider standard. The design of the Hudson Italia was very influential on the automotive industry and the vehicle gained international recognition. However, only 26 models of this car were ever produced, including the initial prototype, a collector's dream. It took 38 years for Wayne to get a hold of this car, which is now one of his proudest finds and possessions. Carini's journey to finding a model of this car was covered by the New York Times and ultimately inspired the production of Chasing Classic Cars. The stunning low-riding Porsche 356B Cabriolet is one of Wayne's favorites in his collection. First unveiled at the 1959 Frankfurt Auto Show, this vehicle is equipped with a 75 horsepower engine and featured a set of beautiful leather seats along with a thickly padded folding top. The factory produced only around 1,600 cars of this model, so getting a hold of one was no easy feat. The second cabriolet in Wayne's collection is his Mercedes-Benz 560 SL Roadster from 1986. It's the final model of the Mercedes SL series and is considered by many to be the best. Its improved V8 engine allowed it to perform as sleekly as its exterior, going from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 7.5 seconds, compared to 10 seconds needed by earlier models. 
This roadster car was a status symbol at the time, owned by millionaires, movie stars, and famous singers. Today, it's only increasing in value, with well-preserved models costing upwards of $150,000. Anyone who follows chasing classic cars knows how fond Wayne is of classic Bentleys. One such model is a 1926 Bentley Touring, which is also one of the oldest vehicles in his collection. During the pre-World War II era, Bentley dominated the car industry, and the Touring model is one of the best from that time period, being significantly larger and more powerful than its biggest competitor at the time, Bugatti Type 35, Bentley Touring won the prestigious Le Mans Endurance Race. With this model, Wayne attended the California Mill Vintage Rally twice, along with the 2021 Greenwich Concours d'Elegance, where it was one of the biggest attractions. Even as a teenager, Wayne had admired the elegance of the Jaguar E-Type series, ever since seeing William Dieffendorfer's car in 1961. Produced between 1961 and 1975, these models combined beautiful exterior with high performance and a relatively low market price. On the release of the first series model in 1961, Enzio Ferrari called the E-Type the most beautiful car ever made. Even today, classic car enthusiasts consider E-Type models to be some of the best sports cars of the 1960s, while in 2008, the magazine Daily Telegraph named it number one on their 100 most beautiful cars list. The particular model Wayne owns is the Jaguar XKE Convertible, which is considered to be the most remarkable model of the E-Type series. In terms of performance, Carini compares it to the famous Ferrari Daytona model. Wayne Carini is the proud owner of an extremely rare MGA 1600 coupe model from 1960. Although not as well known today, Britain's MGA was an automotive giant during the post-World War II era. Their affordable sports cars were a particularly big hit on the American market, as the countries built a stronger trade relationship. The two-door 1600 MGA model was a major stylistic shift from MG's previous line of cars, with the inclusion of front disc brakes, a distinct parking and turn light. Under the hood, it has a 1.6-liter 80-horsepower engine. The car achieved a maximum speed of 96 miles per hour and can go from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 13.3 seconds. Ford Falcon Spirit is considered to be one of the most stylish classic American coupes, so it's no wonder it has found a place in Wayne's collection. This particular model is from 1963, featuring a Ford V8 engine, bucket seats, and a sleek red exterior. Ford Falcon Spirit was the first Ford car to have a V8 engine and served as the foundation for the equally iconic 1964 Ford Mustang. This limited edition model is a dream of many classic car collectors, and one of them is even owned by Jay Leno, who is a well-known classic car aficionado, with over 160 cars and 60 motorcycles in his collection. Another rare find in Wayne's collection is his Arnold Bristol Coupe model from 1954. The story behind this car is truly unique. It was designed and produced by the controversial automotive industry mogul Stanley H. Wacky Arnold from Chicago, Illinois. He began his career by taking in foreign, mainly British and Italian cars, and selling them as American, after giving them new bodywork. In 1953, Wacky Arnold negotiated with Bristol Cars to purchase 200 of their 404 series cars and 130 engines from the earlier 403 model. He then sent these chassis to Carrozzeria Bertone, where they received new, aerodynamic bodies designed by Franco Scaglione, who later became known for his work on Alfa Romeo BAT concept cars. As part of this collaboration, Arnold and Bartone built four variants of the famous Arnold Bartone model racer, Elide, Deluxe, and Coupe. Only 142 of these cars were ever produced, four of them coupes. So the fact that Carini owns both Coupe and a racer is extraordinary. One of the most unique cars in Carini's possession is his 1948 Davis Devon. This three-wheeled roadster was originally conceptualized by racing car designer Frank Curtis for Joel Thorne, a famous American car racer and socialite. The model was aggressively marketed at the time, but never got to be mass-produced. In fact, only 13 models of this car made it off the production line, making it very hard to find on modern markets. Interestingly enough, Wayne Carini didn't find this car himself. Rather, it found him. He was actually approached by an owner who knew of Carini through his TV work and sent him an offer. Wayne accepted and pushed the car through an extensive restoration process while changing its color from vivid purple to a modest light teal. Looking at Wayne's collection, it seems that he's able to get his hands on just about any classic car he wants. 
However, one car has remained on his wish list for years. A 1960 Ferrari 250 SWB, the model that enamored him as a child and ignited his passion for the automotive industry. It's beautiful, compact, it does everything right, he said in one of his interviews. Through the years, Carini has worked on restoring seven Ferrari 250s, but what's ultimately stopping him from purchasing one is its price, which ranges up to $10 million. Despite this, Wayne is determined to add it to his collection one day. Outside of working on chasing classic cars and taking care of his collection, Wayne has a pretty busy schedule on his hands. He operates three companies in Portland, F40 Motorsports, Continental Auto Ltd, and Carini Carroceria, along with marketing books and other merchandise on his official website. Carini is a family man. He's been married to Lori for more than 40 years now, and the pair have two daughters together. Their older daughter, Kimberly, was diagnosed with autism in childhood, which inspired Wayne to help autism research as a member of Autism Speaks. He organizes charity events and auctions to raise funds for autistic children and their parents. Wayne's younger daughter, Lindsay, shares his passion for cars and has served as Grand Marshal at Klingberg Vintage Motor Car Festival with him. She married in 2012 and has a son. Unlike many of his peers, Wayne doesn't shy away from social media. In fact, he's quite active on Instagram, on which he frequently shares new photos from his garage with his 65,000 followers. On his Facebook page, Carini posts photos and videos from all the car shows and events he's been to. If there's a classic car show happening anywhere near him, Chances are Wayne will be there. As of September 2020, Wayne's net worth has been estimated at more than 25 million. Most of it comes from his TV work, while he's also earned a large portion of it through his business endeavors, through which he has worked with the affluent elite and celebrities. As to the value of his collection, one can only say, priceless. Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos, which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.